prove that the function defined by f of x equals 1 over 1 plus x squared is uniformly continuous. Before we do this proof, let's recall what it means for a function to be uniformly continuous. So recall f from say a to r is uniformly continuous. Uniformly continuous. I'll just put cont. If for all epsilon greater than zero, we can find some positive number delta greater than zero, such that for all x and y in A, with the distance between x and y being less than delta, we have the distance between f of x and f of y being smaller than epsilon. Okay, that's what it means for a function to be uniformly continuous. We'll do that really quick, but hopefully it's just a quick refresher. So proof. So in order to start the proof, we have to use this definition. So we have to start by letting epsilon be greater than zero. So let epsilon be greater than zero. And then we have to find a delta. So this is the part you usually figure out on your own on the side. Um, let's choose delta equal to epsilon over two. I figured this out beforehand because I've done this problem before. Um, but you'll, you'll see as we go through it, as we go through the proof, we're kind of going to figure it out as we go through it. So then, for all x, y, and r, with the distance between x and y less than delta, what we'll do is we'll look at um, the difference of f of x and f of y, and we'll show it's smaller than epsilon. So then we have f of x, which is 1 over 1 plus x squared, minus f of y, which is 1 over 1 plus y squared. And the obvious thing to do here is to combine the fractions. So we can do that by finding an LCD. So I'll skip some steps here, but this is 1 plus y squared minus 1 plus x squared over, and then here we have 1 plus x squared, 1 plus y squared. And then some stuff here should cancel in the numerator. Looks like the ones cancel, and so we're left with y squared minus x squared over one plus x squared, parentheses, and then parentheses one plus y squared. And in all of this, we still have the absolute value. So this can be written as follows. This is really the absolute value of y squared minus x squared and you can put these guys in the bottom in absolute values too. I'll go ahead and do that. So 1 plus x squared. And then here we have the 1 plus whoops, y squared. Lots of absolute values and 1. So that's an a absolute value line. That's a 1. <laughs> okay. I don't like y squared minus x squared. So you can rewrite this as the absolute value of x squared minus y squared. You don't have to do that. I just, for me, it just makes more sense. So you have one plus x squared. I'll write these smaller. And then one plus y squared. Okay, this is the difference of squares. So, so far we've done nothing tricky. This is the natural thing to do. In fact, this is how I figured out the problem. I just started writing stuff down and then seeing what happens. So the difference of squares, you can write this as x plus y with absolute value, and then x minus y. And this is all being divided by 1 plus x squared times, and then here we have 1 plus y squared. And just to make the point, we have x minus y here, x minus y less than delta. So this part here is kind of taken care of. So I'm going to write this as the absolute value of x plus y over, and then here we have 1 plus x squared, and then here we have 1 plus y squared. And then I'm going to put this on the outside over here. So if we can show that this first term here, this first factor is bounded, in other words, it's less than some number, we are set because we know that this is less than delta. So what we'll do is we'll use the triangle inequality in the numerator. So this is less than or equal to, so this piece is going to hang out, so I'm going to put parentheses here, the absolute value of x over 1 plus x squared times and then 1 plus y squared. That's a y. Plus. 
the absolute value of y over, and then here we have 1 plus x squared times, and then here we have 1 plus y squared. And all of this is being multiplied by the absolute value of x minus y. So we need to make this smaller than a number. One thing we can do is we can drop the y squared. So this is less than or equal to, so we'll drop the y squared here. We just want x's here, so it's less than or equal to the absolute value of 1 plus x squared. And then over here, we'll drop the x squared. So this is plus y over 1 plus y squared. And then we still have the absolute value of x minus y. And this is the part that took me longer to do, I think. This whole fraction here is less than 1. And this whole fraction here is also less than 1. And we'll, we'll prove that at the end of this video. So we have 1 plus 1 times the absolute value of x minus y. So this is equal to 2 times the absolute value of x minus y. And we know that the absolute value of x minus y is less than delta. So this is less than 2 delta. And we said delta was equal to epsilon over 2. So this is 2 times epsilon over 2, which is equal to epsilon. And that completes the proof. So this is really, the proof is actually how I figured it out. Um, the natural thing to do when you get here, though, is to use the triangle inequality. So after you do a couple of these, you'll notice it's a reoccurring idea. Let's go ahead and prove why this step was true really, really quickly. So we're going to prove, so claim, that if you have the absolute value of a over the absolute value of 1 plus a squared, the claim is that this is less than or equal to 1. And this is just like a proof sketch. So if a is less than or equal to 1, then the absolute value of a over the absolute value of 1 plus a squared, well, the absolute value of a is less than or equal to 1. So this is less than or equal to 1 over the absolute value of 1 plus a squared. And then we can just simply drop the a squared. This is 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. So it's less than or equal to 1. If a is bigger than 1, then we have the absolute value of a over the absolute value of 1 plus a squared. And this is less than or equal to the absolute value of a over the absolute value of a squared by dropping the 1. And this is equal to the absolute value of a over the absolute value of a squared, which is 1 over the absolute value of a. Notice in all of this, uh, a is not 0 because it's bigger than 1. And a is bigger than 1, so it's positive, so this is just 1 over a. And since a is bigger than 1, if we divide this inequality by a, we get 1 over a less than 1. So this is less than 1. Boom. So in any case, it's less than or equal to 1. And that's how we were able to do this very, very, very key step. I just didn't want to have to do all of this in the middle of the proof. So hopefully that video was helpful, and hopefully it made sense. That's it.